In this video, I'll be going over the setup menu of the Leica S-Type 006. If I press the bottom right button on the back of the Leica S-Type 006 to bring up the info display, I can press that button again to bring up the setup menu. To navigate this menu, I can use either the rear scroll wheel, the joystick, or I can press the bottom right button again to page down through the various pages of the setup menu. The first thing you'll see is data storage. I can press either the joystick or the rear dial to get into this menu. Here we have three options. If I have a compact flash card and an SD card in the camera at the same time, Sequential will first fill the compact flash card and then switch over to the SD card when the CF card is full. Parallel will shoot a raw DNG file to the compact flash card and a JPEG file to the SD card. External is when you're shooting tethered to a computer. By default, we leave it on a sequential, especially if you only have one card in the camera. Image numbering allows you to change both the folder name and the file name of the way the images are stored on the compact flash or SD card. First, we can change our folder by clicking New Folder. Here you can use the joystick to change the folder name. Next, we can change the file name. Again, use the joystick to change the numbering and the lettering. We can also reset back to defaults. To go back without changing anything, hit the upper right button to go back. Next, we have Format. This is how we can format either an SD or a compact flash card, or both, if both are installed in the camera. Click the rear scroll wheel to get in. In this case, I have an SD card in the camera. So I'll click the scroll wheel, select Yes, give it a second, and the card is formatted. You see, grayed out, if I have both cards in, I will be able to select Format Both Cards, and it would format both the compact flash and the SD card at the same time. USB mode, in a pinch, if you don't have a card reader, you can select this and go to Mass Storage. Now you can attach the camera to the computer via a USB cable and upload images directly off the camera. This would be a worst case scenario. We definitely don't recommend this unless you really need it. HDMI allows you to play back images on an HDTV using an HDMI cable. You can select both the resolution and which images you want to display. Sensor cleaning will pop open the mirror and the shutter, allowing you to expose the sensor to clean it with either a blow bulb or a swab. Be very careful when cleaning the sensor of your Leica S, as it is fragile. On the second page of the setup menu of the Leica S, the first option we have is Auto Review. This describes the camera's behavior when automatically playing back an image after shooting. The first option we have is Duration. This tells you how long the image you just shot will stay on the screen for. If you don't want to see it at all, select Off. If you want it to stay on until you half press or fully press the shutter, select hold, or select any duration in between. I like three seconds. Next, we have histogram. This simply says that if you auto review an image, turning it on will overlay a histogram over that image. Turning it off, and you won't see any histogram. Clipping, if we turn this on, our clipping warnings will show, indicating over and under exposure. We'll set those up in our next setting. To go back, hit the upper right button. Next, we have histogram. Default is standard, but if you'd rather see an RGB histogram, you can select it as such. Next, we have our clipping definition. Here, we can set the threshold for both under and over exposure when the camera uses blue to indicate an underexposed shadow and red to indicate an overexposed highlight. I like the default settings of 2 and 253, but if you want to change them, you can use the rear scroll dial, and you can see on the screen, on the graph, as it changes. To navigate between the two, I can use the joystick. When I get my settings, I can select the rear scroll dial, or if I go in again, I can use the back button, like so. Next, we have the monitor and display settings. This controls some brightness functions. For the back plane, I can do the brightness, low to high, we like medium, and the backlight, from automatic to high. Automatic uses this sensor right here to automatically dim or brighten the back screen based on available light conditions. For the sake of this video, we'll keep it on high. I can use the joystick to go back. Top cover, brightness, definitely recommend high. And standby time, how long the top OLED screen will stay on until it turns off. I'd go with 20 seconds because it's easy. To go back, use the upper right button or use the joystick. Auto power off, this tells you how long the camera will stay on before automatically turning itself off. You can turn it to off, but be aware, if you put it back in your bag with it set to off, it will stay on until the battery is drained. I'd stick with five minutes just to be safe. 
To make my selection, I can hit the joystick or the scroll wheel. Next, we have the acoustic signal. These are simple beeps that indicate certain things. Volume can be low or high. If I have AF confirmation, I can turn that off or on to get a beep when the autofocus is locked, or various warnings like if my card is full. I usually keep these off. To go back, again, the upper right button. Lastly, we have our virtual horizon. Select this, and you can use the virtual horizon to level the camera while you're shooting. This is especially handy for landscape shooting while you're on a tripod. On the third page of the setup menu, we have a couple of very important functions. The first, and one of my favorites, are the custom functions. On the Leica S, the four buttons around the LCD and the depth of field preview button on the front next to the lens can be assigned a number of different functions when you press and hold them. To set up our custom functions, first I'll go into the menu, either using our joystick button or our button here on the rear dial. By default, you can see upper left is ISO, lower left is exposure metering, lower right is compensation, upper right is focus mode, and the stop down button is stop down. These are fine, but if you want to really customize the camera, you can actually set each one of these individually. To do so, turn the wheel until you get to custom. You'll notice there's an off position. This turns off all the four buttons surrounding the screen. So if I press and hold them, they won't bring up any custom functions. On custom, I can use the joystick to navigate to each button. If I want to change this function, I can press in, and I'm given a list of all the different settings that I like. You can see you have a lot of options to choose from. Depending on your needs, you can select a number of different functions. But for the upper left, I generally like ISO. To make your selection, you can hit the joystick button or the real scroll dial button. Next, we have lower left. I like to set this to drive mode because that way I can easily access the self-timer functions. Lower right, I like to set it to white balance but this is really a flexible button because it really depends on what I'm shooting. Upper right, I always set to exposure compensation. This is because when the camera's up to my eye, I can easily reach this button without having to take the camera down from my face and adjust my exposure compensation, especially because it's also visible in the viewfinder as I adjust it. Stop down button, I almost always set for key lock because if I'm in the field and I'm hand holding the camera, I can easily lock the key so I'm not changing any settings by accident. Again, these are completely customizable and you can set it up any way you like. Once you've got your five buttons configured, simply hit your upper right button to go back. You'll see now I have custom in my custom functions menu and we're good to go. AE slash AF lock. What this does is describe the function of this rear button depending on the focus mode that you're in. If you have the camera in, in AF mode for AF mode or if you have the camera in MF mode for MF mode. For AF mode, you can see I have autofocus lock, auto exposure lock, or both. If I have it set on autofocus lock, pressing the rear button will prevent the camera from autofocusing while I have the shutter halfway pressed. Auto exposure lock will keep my exposure locked while I have the button pressed on the back. This will lock both the focus and the exposure. For MF mode, this button is very important. As I said earlier, if you want to use what we call back button focusing, meaning activating the autofocus using the back button instead of the shutter button, you want AFS on. This means single autofocus will be activated when you press the back button and not when you press the shutter. You can also have this button be autofocus on and auto exposure lock, or autofocus continuous on, autofocus continuous and auto exposure lock, or just auto exposure lock. If you select this, it will completely disable the camera's autofocus until you change to a different setting. I keep it on AFS on. To go back, hit the upper right button. Key lock, which I set in my custom functions, is another way to get to this setting. I can enter it and select on or off. If I turn it on, it will lock the keys so that I can't accidentally change the camera's aperture or shutter speed. New to the Leica S-Type 006 is the click wheel function. Now, I can change two important functions. The first, which was available on the S2, I can change either a short push or a long push. When I'm changing from my various shooting modes like program, manual, aperture priority, and shutter priority, I can either select a short push or a long push to change my shooting modes. To go to click wheel f-stop, this is all new on the Leica S. I can actually change the direction that this wheel goes when I set my aperture. So that way, if you're used to one system or another and you prefer the wheel go a certain way, you can configure it completely to your liking. 
Once you've got these set up, go back, and you're good to go. On the fourth page of the setup menu, we see another set of functions that we can change. The first is our copyright information. Here, you can enter customizable fields, and that way you can tag the metadata of your image with information that you set. To navigate the different fields, simply press the rear dial. Next, we have user profiles. These are four banks of settings that you can save. That way, you can easily access different camera configurations. You can also administrate your profiles. You can export them to an SD or compact flashcard and import them. This is great if you loan or rent out the camera, or if you have a lot of different settings that you like to use. Next, we have our reset, which will reset the camera to factory defaults. GPS, the Leica S-Type 006 has a built-in GPS unit. This way, you can geotag your images with longitude and latitude and view them later where they were taken. Also, as you'll see in a minute, the GPS will automatically sync the time and date for you. If we go to our date and time menu, we can select the different formats for the dates, and we can set the date. If we go to our time, we can see the first option here, GPS auto time, we can turn on, and you can see the GPS automatically knows where we are and sets the time for us. In our format, we can select 12 hours and 24 hours. You can see that the setting is grayed out because, again, the GPS is figuring this out for us. Next, we have languages. The Leica S-Type 006 comes preloaded with a number of different languages for your convenience. Last, we see firmware. Here, it displays the current firmware version for the Leica S-Type 006. If I enter this option, I can also see the firmware version for the lens. Leica updates both the camera and the lens firmware periodically, so it's important to check online to see what the latest version is. To activate one of our preset custom functions on the Leica S, simply press and hold any one of the four buttons surrounding the rear LCD. It takes about a second press, then let go, and you can see the function that I've set is brought up. To adjust, turn the dial and press to confirm. I can also use the joystick. Just a quick press, and let go, and there's your function. If you remember, I've assigned key lock to the front button. If I press that, there's key lock. To make any of these go away, simply half press the shutter. I can adjust, half press, goes away. 